Hello and welcome back to my allotment garden. I'm actually here inside the pollen tunnel today because it's really quite wet and miserable outside. In fact, you can probably hear the rain pitter pattering on the roof above me. So I'm going to stay in here today and I thought I'd show you how I plant my tomatoes, how I support them with string. I'll also run through some of the companion plants that I'm planting in between my tomatoes to try and keep all those pests and diseases away and also to improve the flavour of my tomatoes so that I have a really delicious crop come summer. My method for planting tomatoes is a little bit different to most people. Um, I dig a nice big hole and even though my tomato plants only come from a nine centimetre pot, um, the reason why I do that is because I also plant a water bottle into the hole. Now this bottle is one that I've reused from last year. Um, I've actually drilled holes down the bottom and along the sides, uh, not too far up into the top neck of the bottle though. And this is how I water my tomatoes. So what I'll do is I'll plant this bottle with the tomato plant. So it sits like that in the ground and then I put the tomato plant next to it. And essentially when it comes to watering the tomatoes, I'll get the hose, take the nozzle off the end and pop it straight into this bottle. So that means that the water goes directly down into the roots. It's not going to sit on the surface of the soil and run off if it's too dry and basically the main reason I do it is to help prevent tomato blight and that's a fungal disease that really thrives in warm damp conditions so my theory was if all the water is going down and into the soil rather than up and into the air then hopefully that prevents blight and I haven't actually had blight for about three years now um, whether that's also with the weather conditions you know you've got to bear that in mind but it's a system that works for me you might have your own way of doing things and that's great but I just thought I'd show you how I'm doing this today in case you want to give it a try. So I've made a big planting hole, the bustle's also in there. The next thing to do is put some well rotted horse manure and or a mixture of uh, multi-purpose compost, preferably peat free if you have it in your area, um, into the planting hole. That just helps retain all the moisture and when you think about it, this polytunnel hasn't had any moisture really um, all winter. I don't water this polytunnel at all in the winter because there's not a lot that grows in here. Now that the mixture of well rotted manure and compost is in the hole, we're going to give that a really good drench because the soil down there is pretty dry. And it's a good idea to keep the caps of this bottle so that you can replace it after you've watered and then that way it's really locking in all of the moisture, it's not going to come out and also it helps prevent any little um, insects from possibly falling down and into the water bottle. This tomato plant is now ready to be planted and one of the things you can do with your tomatoes is plant them really quite deep and this is great if you've grown your tomatoes a bit too early, if they've grown a little bit leggy and tall and they're a bit spindly. Um, what you can do is you can remove some of the lower leaves and actually plant them really quite deep and then they'll grow roots off the main stem. So for example I could remove these leaves here and plant it way up just underneath this leaf here and that will create a much stronger plant that's going to be much healthier in the long run. Before I plant the tomato I'm going to use some more of this root grow mycorrhizal fungi and you've seen me use it before and I really do think it helps give your plants a really good start in life and it helps the roots grow and makes a really great relationship between the soil and the roots to increase the uptake of water and nutrients and so I'm going to sprinkle this all over the base of the plant over this over the planting hole and I'll even put some in the bottom of the hole because you really want them to come these little granules to come into contact directly with the roots. So I'm going to just pop this next to the bottle and as you can see the soil level is probably going to come up to about there. So I'm just going to move the soil now back around the plant and you may also wish to add a little bit more multi-purpose compost and some manure if you have some. Bring the soil around and once you've half covered it press down on the root ball. You really want to firm it in so that those roots come into contact with that mycorrhizal fungi and so there's no air pockets beneath. 
I will be watering in the tomato plant quite thoroughly in just a moment, but first of all, I'm going to plant its companions, and the first of which is French marigold. And French marigold is actually quite, quite a stinky plant, and it's apparently good for warding off things like whitefly and also beetles. And I do have a problem with flea beetle here in the pie tunnel, it likes to eat my basil, so hopefully it'll help to control those. The second companion is a basil. This is a sweet basil, uh, it's one that I've grown from seed and it's just a natural companion for tomatoes. They taste great together, they improve each other's flavour and it also makes harvesting really easy too. So you can pick your tomatoes, pick your basil and then you're already halfway to having a delicious meal. Just going to water in the plants. Um, I'm also going to actually water the top of the tomato, which is something I wouldn't be doing later on in the year. It's just to get all rid of all those little air pockets. You could also mulch the plant with some manure as well. That'll help retain all of the moisture. From now on, when I water the tomato plants, I'll be using the hose directly down into the bottle. I'll be letting the water level fill almost right up to the top before I then take it out and move on to the next plant. Another reason why I do it this way is because it helps prevent any water droplets from falling onto the leaves. So if I was using a hose or a watering can to water the plants, sometimes you might get the odd splash falling onto the leaves. And in the middle of summer, when the sun is really quite hot, it can actually damage the leaves because those water droplets are actually acting like a magnifying glass and then the sun will just burn and scorch the leaves. And wet leaves also can be a cause for blight, so that's another reason why I water directly into the ground. Now that all of the plants are in and watered, it's time to support the tomato plants. Now this is a cordon variety, remember, so it's going to grow off one main stem and this is going to grow six seven feet high right up the roof of my polytunnel now if you're growing a bush variety they are much stockier much fatter sturdier plants so they don't really require much in the way of staking now this banana legs variety is going to grow some very long legs so i need to support the plant so that when it's covered in tomatoes it's not going to snap and break I like to use string to support my tomatoes. I've used bamboo canes in the past, but I find they kind of get in the way and sometimes they might snap or they'll bend and I might poke myself in the eye. That's happened before. So I now support my tomatoes with string. So let me show you how I do it. When I set up my polytunnel, these are the materials that I use. I have some thick natural garden string, some flexible plant tie. This has a wire running down the middle, a sharp knife, some thinner garden twine, and some bamboo cane. To support the tomatoes, each plant needs its own vertical string to climb. And then I also run some bamboo canes along the roof of the polytunnel. You can see here where I've tied in the first cane. So I just need to add another five across each section of the polytunnel roof. When you're using bamboo canes along the edge of the polytunnel and especially towards the ends of the tunnel it's a good idea to use these protective cane caps on the ends of the bamboo canes to prevent it from poking through the plastic cover and then making a big hole. The bamboo canes now go the entire way down the roof of the polytunnel so it's time to string up the tomatoes. Well, I might as well start with the tomato that we've just planted. So first of all, I'm cutting a small section of this plant tie. That's about three or four inches long. And then I'm going to take the thick garden twine and tie it onto the plant tie, pulling that knot really tight so that it's secure. I'm now going to take the plant tie and put it around the base of the tomato stem and then twist it at the ends to secure it in place, like so. And one of the reasons I use this plant tie is because you can reuse it and I want to give enough room inside that gap there because this stem is going to get much thicker. So I can then undo this and then retie it so that it's not going to cut into the stem. Now, some people who support their tomatoes with string prefer to do it with a plastic based string. 
which you know it's reusable to a point but I don't like the idea that all those little plastic fibers are going to end up in the environment um, this I can just put onto my compost bin at the end of the year and it's quite thick so don't do this with a really thin twine that you think could snap because the weight of these tomato plants is going to get really heavy so you need something that's going to support them so I'm going to take this string and pass it behind the bamboo cane that I've just put up and now I'm going to put it up to the centre bar of the polytunnel. And I've just wrapped it around and now I'm going to tie it off and leave some excess just in case I want to change the length throughout the season. So as you can see I've looped around the top bar a couple of times and then tied it off and tucked away the end of the string. That's the first one strung up. I've only got 13 more to go um, but as this plant grows you can either wrap the plant around the string a bit like a vine or what I do is use some more of those green plant ties and actually secure it to the string and this plant will soon grow all the way up and even up over the roof uh, so it's going to be a complete jungle in here um, and I'll keep you updated with tips on how I help prevent blight in the polytunnel as the season goes on. And there we go, all 14 tomatoes are now planted. We've got the companion plants in between each tomato and they're all strung up to the top of the polytunnel for their support. Now before you know it, over the next month or two these are going to absolutely rocket up and it's soon going to become a jungle of tomatoes and it won't be long before I'm harvesting the first ones. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how I set up my polytunnel for summer. I'll see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.